Good morning, Eagles Way Church. How we doing? I heard a couple of you. We had some people in the uh, in the in the sanctuary with us today uh, that would like to give you a converge welcome. How, how do we do it in converge? Let me get two claps and a Ric Flair. Look at that enthusiasm right there. On behalf of everyone here, if you're a first time visitor, I want you to want to welcome you. You get ready to hear some amazing music, amazing praise and worship from my very talented band. Uh, our preachers kind of hit or miss sometimes. No, I'm joking. No, he's great. He's great. He's great. Now, really, why I'm here, um, it's that time of year when you send your sons and daughters off to camp to become paintball targets for me. And sometimes I'm a paintball target from them. But um, today, to support the youth, we're having a chicken queue up in the youth building. And I think that might be a picture. Yep. Donnie Porkchop is on the grill. Mm. And after church, you know, we get out pretty reasonable time. We can make it to the buffets or wherever we go. But you don't have to leave today. You can go right upstairs and make a donation that will help support our youth and sending them to summer camp. So uh, you go, get a plate, pay about a hundred bucks, bucks per plate. I'm just kidding, unless you really wanna pay a hundred bucks per plate. But um, definitely come up. Don't forget about us after church. Come up, support the youth, buy a plate, get some great chicken. And uh, we'll thank you once we're up there. And uh, you can dine in, you can leave. If you're antisocial, it doesn't matter. But we have plates and we have tables for you guys. So definitely come up and support us and help send these wonderful youth to camp. One more time, guys. Two claps and a Ric Flair. How could you not support that?
um, read a verse from Isaiah. It's 12, 2. Behold, God, my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. Yes, he has become my salvation. He has given us strength. Strength against fear. Strength against all anxieties. Everything that we face, he is our strength. He didn't just give it to us. He is our strength. He's our salvation. He frees us. He gives us peace. He gives us hope. We have to go to Him when we feel weak. We cry out. If you don't know what to say, Lord, you are my strength. Claim it. He is our strength, and that grace will come like an avalanche.
up your name today. We are full of nothing but love and praise and worship for you, God. Thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for your love and your grace and your strength. Father, we give you all the glory today, all the worship, all the praise. Forever, forever, every day, God, you are everything. We love you so much. Fill this place. Fill us up.
worship you, Father. We have enough praise in our bodies, Lord, to worship you and to thank you, God. Your love is overwhelming. Your grace is never-ending. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being a part of our lives, for creating us in your image, God, so that we can worship and serve you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I didn't know how many would show up after a long July 4th weekend, but some of you did. Glad you're here. You glad you're here? All right, good. You can clap. I'm glad you're here. Um, if you, in your bulletin, there's a connection card. If you'd fill that out for us, we'd appreciate it. Put it in the open bucket when it comes by at the end of the service. So we can thank you for being here and uh, keep up with you. That's how we keep up with you. Keep up. We have to. We have to watch. How I many you know we have to watch over your souls? Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. All right. Uh, we're in a summer series called Relational Wholeness, and uh, this is July, and this is only the second time I've spoken. I've asked several different people to help me with this series, and um, it's been good. How many have enjoyed it? You, you, your relationships better. Good. Okay. Three of his relationships better. All right, maybe we'll, we'll work on a few more of you this morning. But um, the uh, first week, <clears throat> Will shared about how we communicate. How many know the spirit of communication is as important as anything else? See, it's not, <clears throat> it's not always what you say, it's how you say it. You can say some things that are good and right, but have not a good tone about it. And so how you say things is important. I talked about the second week about friendships and how important friendships are and how Christ desires to be a friend to us. Ralph Martin talked about you got to love yourself. If you can't get along with yourself, how many know you can't get along with anybody else? Because you're with yourself all the time. And so you've got to love yourself and you got to be able to put up with yourself. If you can't put up with yourself, nobody else is going to put up with you either. So you, you, you got to get along with yourself. And then um, Dusty talked last week about how to be a priest in our relationships and that everybody's called to be priests. In the Old Testament, there was a high priest and there were many other priests who worked in the tabernacle and they ministered on behalf of the people and everything they did was for it was somebody else. And so in the New Covenant, Jesus comes along and he does away with that priesthood and says there's a brand new priesthood and it's the priesthood of the believer. And everybody now is a priest unto God. It's not pastors and, and, and people who preach and teach that are just priests. Everybody's a priest. Did you know you're a priest? God ordained you a priest when you accepted Christ. When you, when you came into the family, you became a priest, and he wants you to serve others as priests. I want to talk this morning about uh, not one of my favorite subjects to talk about because it's always a little difficult to talk about marriage, but uh, we're going to talk about marriage this morning, and uh, I'm going to share some principles brought out a scripture that uh, will make your marriage better. Uh, my friend Mike Oliver does a, uh, went to Florida years ago to begin a church, and he ended up, my mother, I remember telling Mike, I don't know if I mean, I've told this story too, but uh, uh, when Mike was with us for 22 years, and he went to Fort Walton Beach to be, start a church down there, and that was his goal, but my mother told him before he left, the day we had a celebration for Mike, she walked up to Mike and she said, now let me tell you something, son. What you think you're going to Florida for is not what you're going to Florida for. You, God's got something totally different for you to do. And he ended up having, for the last five or six years now, a full-time beach wedding business, if you want to call it, but he really doesn't see it as a business because he's touching on a lot of people's lives spiritually. And he's actually ministering to more people spiritually now than he would have been had he had a church. But um, there was a guy that Mike did a ceremony for several years ago. And, what he, and, and he was going over some traditional vows with Mike. And uh, he was a very wealthy man and very... Uh, it, very well off, had done well in life, and he, 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 got to the, he got to a place where he was showing Mike some vows. He says, now this is how I want to change this, though. And it's a very traditional vow, 
And the vow goes something like this. Will you have this woman to be your wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do you part? If so, answer, I will. And the man changed it, and he says, you know, I wanted to say this, for rich and for richer, in health and in healthier. And that really registered to me. I thought, wow, what's wrong with that? See, relationships ought to get richer. They ought to get more healthy. And so I actually have changed it in my own. I reminded myself of that this week. I told myself, from now on, when I do that, if I do that particular vow, I'm going to say that. Do you take this woman, do you take this man for rich and richer, and health and healthier? How many want your relationships to get better? And so that's what really relationships should grow richer and get better because that's how God wants it. Things, God, you know, in the beginning, we're going to look at Genesis in a moment and how God intended it for, to be, intended to be always. But see, we have, we call a day this. We call a day in the morning it starts and in the evening it ends. And we call that a day, right? You get up in the morning, you say, this is a new day. And then when nightfall comes, you call that the end of the day. When you read Genesis, everything God created, after he created one time, he said, and, the, and from the evening to the morning, he called it the first day. From the evening to the morning. Why would he go from the nightfall to the morning and call it the first day? day because of a principle I've taught you for years and years the best is yet to come he wants it to get brighter and brighter and brighter until Peter says the day star rises in your heart isn't that good that's good that's good preaching that's uh, that's good stuff he wants it but I'm glad that God saves the best for last aren't you all right in uh, <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 2 Scripture says this, Go and shout this message to Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember how eager you were to please me as a young bride long ago, how you loved me and followed me, even through the barren wilderness. Another translation, the Amplified Translation, says this, I betrothed you in Egypt. In other words, I asked you to marry me in Egypt. But he said, and in Mount Sinai... We were married. You see how God looked at it. The marriage vows took place on Mount Sinai to his people. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart. And, da -da. and he goes and he gives them, and it's really the vows that he's asking them to make toward him. And the vows really come down to two things. The first four have to do with your relationship with God. The last six have to do with your relationship with one another. How many know Jesus came along and said the same thing? There's only really two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. That's what it's all about. Then in, in Genesis chapter 2, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. I'm going to leave this passage up there because I'm going to give you, God gives four principles of how to have a healthy relationship. But before I do, I want to, there's some things that God said right before this, and this is what God said. The Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. How many know it's not good to ever be alone? It's not a principle of God for you or anybody else to be alone. So it says, the Lord God said, after he created everything, created man, said, the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet. I will give him someone to help him out. And that's the reason... The Bible says, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to come over Adam. But before he did that, the Bible says, and the Lord God formed out of the earth the birds of the air, the wild beast, and all the livestock, and he brought them to Adam to see what he would name them. Now, Adam was so smart and so creative 
that he stood there and it's just all these animals came to him and Adam looked at him and said, that looks like a hippo. Well, that's an elephant. Well, that's a monkey. Well, that's an eagle. And he names all of these animals. And then it says this, but Adam could not find a helpmeet suitable for him. And every man here said, hallelujah. The hallelujah that Adam did not find in the wild animal kingdom a helpmate suitable for him. And then it says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he took out one of his ribs, and he made a woman. And he brought the woman to Adam, and Adam looked at the woman and said, Wow, a warm man. And for this cause, he said, a man should leave his mother and his father. The first principle that God says to help a, have a healthy relationship is to keep your priorities right. Your husband, your wife is your number one priority. And if you keep your priorities in order, if you'll never leave from that, I guarantee you things will be well. But they have to be your number one priority. You see, God really wants it this way. Some people say the priority is this, it's God, and then it's, then it's this, this, or this, this, or this. Listen, your priority in relationships, if you're married and God's okay with this, your number one priority is your mate because that's how you live out the kingdom. Your, your, your number one priority is the person for whom God brought into your life and you brought into your life. Amen? Okay, okay. She has got to be and I have got to be the number one priority over your children. Because let me tell you something about your children. They will grow up and they will leave you. I assure you, I know from experience, they will grow up and they will leave you. They will leave you. They are going to move out of your house. But that person that you're united with is forever. They need to be your number one priority. Number two, he says, leave his father and mother and is joined. Say joined. Joined to his wife. Now that word joined means this. It means you're joined, you're to cling to, to catch by pursuit, to pursue hard, to catch by pursuit. How, do, how, many, how many was pursued? Okay, nobody, I'm, I feel sorry for you. I was pursued. <laughs> I feel sorry for you that you were not pursued. But I pursued my wife and I caught her I told the story and it's still one of my favorites she was Miss Griffin and she was walking down uh, the street and I saw her in this leopard bikini and she had just won Miss Griffin and I told some friends of mine that was with me I'm going to marry that girl and they said I think Mike was with me and he says you're drunk and I said I may be drunk but I'm going to marry that girl I'm going to marry her I didn't even know who she was and it was about Three months later, I'm working with her brother. And her brother says to me, would you like to have a date with my sister? <laughs> well, that's according to who your sister is. I've, I've, had, I've had one blind date, and it, I wish I was blind. <laughs> I, I never, I don't believe in those. And so he says, you want to have a date with my sister? And I said, well, who's your sister? He said, well, she happened to be Miss Griffin. She just won it. I said, you're kidding me. He said, no, I said, absolutely, I'd love to have a date with your sister. Whew. Ain't God good? <laughs> I was a prophet then and didn't know it. Prophesied my own future by just saying something, just speaking it into existence. Then I liked it, I blew it, I had a first date with her, and I take her and I go out into the country, we go to a house, and we're getting out of the car, and I sit on the way down. Now, there may be some marijuana here, I'm not sure, but... These guys, I, you know, I never know. Are you okay if they have marijuana? And she said, you know, I'm not going to partake, but I'm fine with that. And I pull up, and the guy comes out of the porch. Beeren, did you bring it? 
And I said, and she looked at me and she says, there may be? And I said, yeah. So I dig out of the back seat and bring out the juice. And, and uh, so I almost lost. I think, whoa, man, I'm blown it here. But you know what? I kept pursuing her and pursuing her until I caught her. And she pursued me back. Don't ever stop pursuing. I say that one person got it. Don't ever stop pursuing. And that's just not the husband to pursue the wife. The wife is to pursue the husband. All right, in every area. In every, it's okay to pursue your husband. It's okay to pursue your wife. You're supposed to pursue after them. Read the Song of Solomon. You will be amazed what God said about relationships and how he wants you to pursue one another. Don't ever stop. Some of you guys, you could talk on the telephone for hours. You remember those days? Huh? You just talk and talk. Yeah. You remember that? I went, I went by the walking track about two years ago, and it was one of those hot, hot summer days like we had last week. I mean, hot. And there was this guy and this girl. He had on a long sleeve shirt, a tie. She had on a dress, and it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and they go hand in hand, and they, now they're not walking. They're strolling. I mean, know the difference. They strolling. I, I can just see the Google eyes in him and talking to her, and I, I told myself, wow, that's love. You're out here in the hot, hot sun. You know what? They weren't paying any attention to the sun and how hot it was because they was enjoying the stroll together. They were just walking around that track. And I thought, wow, that's, that's what love is. I mean, keep pursuing each other. Never stop telling that person how much you care for them. Never stop telling them you love them. You can't say that too much. Oh, you know I love you. Really? Do they really know it? Pursue them and pursue them with every fiber of your being. You see, that's how God pursues us and how we pursue Him. Draw near to God, He'll draw near to you. It works. Pursue after them. I, one of my favorite movies, and probably most of you have seen, is 50 First Dates. How many have seen the movie 50 First Dates? Wow great movie she has a brain injury and so she can't remember anything the next day so he has to make her fall in love with him every single day wow wow wouldn't what would happen to me let me tell you something i read a post this morning i was really encouraged about because most posts you read about relationships in a marriage in particular is negative and this was a very positive post and the post had called had brought up some new statistics and the marriage relationship today is stronger than it's ever been how about, how about that it's stronger than it's there are less divorced today than there's been in decades well hallelujah that's good news most time it most time that's not what you hear it's less it used to be 51 percent it's less than 50 percent now it's good news I believe it's because finally some people are un, they, they're finding out that once they get married, they need to keep learning some stuff. They need to keep improving it. They need to keep making it better. How many wants it better? It can be better. God intends for it to be better. He wants it, listen, it will either get better or it will deteriorate. There's no such thing as maintaining. I want you to hear this. There's no such thing as status quo. It won't work. It's got to get better and better and better. And that's what God has for your life individually, what he has for you collectively. He wants things to get better. Aren't you glad? I want my relationship my wife to be better than it ever has been. I want her to pursue me. I want to pursue her. I, I, we tell each other now more, more than ever, I love you. Because that... We need to hear that. And the third thing he said, and they are two are united, say united, united into one. Partnership. We're partners. 
I wish I had understood this principle years ago when I made the biggest financial mistake of my life, all against my wife's advice. She said, don't do this deal. No smart bureau. I, Barbara, I know this is the right decision. I, I know, I know, I know. I can't, I can't go wrong. I've been even promised that I guarantee this deal. And we lost our life savings because I didn't listen to her. I did not take her as what I was supposed to take her. She is my equal partner. Say equal partner. See, that's what when he said that he'll send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will be a help meet to you. It's the same word he used when he gave you a wife. She'll be a helper to you. She'll be just as important to you as the Holy Spirit. She'll be your help meet. I, I like a vow that sometimes, and I vow, but sometimes I do weddings and I say this, woman was not taken out of his head to dominate, nor out of his feet to be trampled upon by him, but out of his side to be equal with him, from near his heart to be loved and protected by him. Your wife is created to be equal with you, partners with you. Well, I thought man was the head of the house. We'll read that in a minute, and you'll get a total different understanding of what Paul was saying when he said that. He wasn't saying what is taken by a lot of people that thinks he said. He didn't say that. We'll talk about that in a minute. And last but not least, he says, and they were naked, and they were not ashamed. There's purity there. Most important thing you'll ever do in your relationships is keep it pure. Keep it pure. Pure and undefiled before God is important. In Ephesians, I want to read this passage of Scripture and close with this. I want you to listen to me. What I'm about to say is so important, so important, okay? This is so important. In 1 Corinthians you got to listen. If you, if you miss this, you're going to misquote me, and, and that's not going to be good. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul wrote about marriage. And then he, nine years later, he writes this. He had a total different understanding of marriage nine years after he wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 7. In chapter 7, Paul basically says this. It's better that you not marry. Because if you marry, you're going to have trouble. He says that. He, he says, I wish you were all like me. Now, you got to understand something about Paul. Something was, something, most, some theologians believe that Paul was married because to, you, he was a part of the Sanhedrin court. And to be a part of the Sanhedrin court, you had to be married. So some believe that Maybe he was going through a tough time in his life when he wrote this. We don't know. But he says there, the only reason really you ought to get married if you can't control your passions. He said, if you can't control your passions, then get married. But I wish you were all like me, and you didn't have to do that. Because if you're married, then you've got to tend to your wife or your husband and love God. And if you're not, then all your devotion can just be toward God. Then, nine years later, he writes this. Further, submit to one another out of the reverence for Christ. Wives, this means submit your husbands as to the Lord. For as a husband is head of his wife, so is Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of his body, the church. Before we go any further, is Christ the head of the church? How does Christ love us? How is Christ sacrificed for us? How is Christ given to us? How many know you don't mind anybody being the head who loves you like that? It's okay. You don't mind anyone who... You see, we really, Jesus said this, if you really want to be my disciple, then love one another and serve one another. That it really comes down, he's, and what Christ said, I did not come to do anything other than serve you. That's why he came. And so Christ is constantly serving us. And so the first thing he says, he says, if you'll love your wife as Christ loved the church, then you'll love her sacrificially. You'll love her sacrificially. Also, it goes on to say, go to the next part, he, he, that he made her holy and clean, and he washed her by the cleansing of God's Word. Christ cleanses the church by speaking wholesome things over her. 
How many know that God only speaks wholesome things over us? And he says he washes the church and he cleanses the church by, ever, by always speaking positive and good things over you. How do you clean? Speak good things over your wife. Speak good things over your husband. <laughs> right? And this is simple stuff, but it works. It, it really, it really, you'll be surprised what speaking good things to your wife will do for you. You'll, some people would be absolutely shocked what will happen if you just speak good things about her. You would be amazed how that works. It, it works amazing things. Speak good things, wholesome things. He did this to present her to himself, a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. Why? Because he said so. You know why I'm perfect? Because my wife says so. Why, why I who, who I am? Because my wife says so. If my wife says it, that's all that matters to me. If she says I'm holy, if she says I'm perfect, then that's what really matters. Really? And he's <laughs> in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of his body, as the scriptures say. A man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. This kid is coming on. I want to give you a quick background of when this was written and when Christ came to the earth. If you think things are bad now, you have no clue where we have come from since Christ came to this planet. In the day that Christ came, the family life was horrible. Children were looked at in a very demeaning, degrading way. Women were looked at in the same way. The Roman Empire, men kept up with dates by, by the, who they were married to at a particular time. Decades were taken, were called out. Well, it was a decade that I was married to so-and-so. Fidelity was practically non-existent. The women were... A Jew in that day would thank God every day for three things. He thanked God he wasn't a slave, he wasn't a Gentile, and he wasn't a woman. The greatest liberation that's ever taken place was taking place at the cross. The same Paul who writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 14, he talks about gifts. He said, a woman's not to speak in the church. If she has anything to say, she would ask her husband at home. St. Paul, who wrote that nine years later, said, In the kingdom, there's neither male nor female, bond nor free. There's one God, one body, one Lord, one baptism, one faith. You see, this is not discrediting. All scripture was inspired by God. Man was inspired to write it when he wrote it. But how many know as you live longer, your inspiration should get better? Paul got wiser in, in Ephesians than he was in 1 Corinthians. He got wiser. He understood some things better then than he understood then. And he writes a total different thing. There is one faith, one Lord, one baptism, no bond, no free, no male, no female. He, he delivered women. The state of society then was horrible. Men treated their kids any way they want to treat their kids. You're talking about abuse. It's not even close today. You see, it's because you read the news and you read the papers and you say it, 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 this happened and that happened, there was way more good happening than bad happening. Christ has brought great things to this world. 
Love has brought great things to this world. And things are much better than it ever has been. And it will continue to get better because of God and God's love and His people. And see, that's why we encourage you to always look and always see the way you, if you see things differently the way you if you can change the way you look at things the things you look at will change it will but we have to be the ones who carry that word there's two schools of thought when Jesus came to the earth and I love what Christ said on the Sermon on the Mount. And um, because men in, had taken things that were said and added so much to it, it took away from the validity of it and what it really was. How many know that's what rumors do? By the time it ends up through the rumor mill, it's 50 times worse than it really ever was. Because everybody's story of it gets worse and worse and worse and gets... God said, you took the law and you just kept adding so many things to it. Jesus said, it hath been said this. Let me tell you what's really. And he begins to take them and bring them back to the originality of what all that really meant. There were two schools of thought about divorce. One was you could divorce your wife for any reason whatsoever. You know what it took to get a divorce back then? You didn't have to go to a lawyer. You know what you did? You took a piece of paper. And you took and you wrote on it. And you said, I'm giving you this day a bill of divorcement. And he handed it to his wife. It was over. And he'd go marry whomever he wanted to marry. And she'd go marry who she wanted to marry. All he had to do. She said, that's not the way it was in the beginning. It's not... You see, all these laws had to come into being because mankind was so evil. Why, why he had to give, why he said, don't revenge. He said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. reason that law had to come into being because people want more than that. If you hit me, I hit you harder. See, what people are really doing, you pluck my eye out, I pluck both your eyes out. Because that's what revenge does. It wants more. And so... God said, you got this thing all messed up. None of this, in the beginning, it was not so. The disciples came and said, Christ, can a, can a, can a man divorce his wife for, for this or that or that? And he says, in the beginning, it wasn't that way. In the beginning, you just read what it was. A man shall leave his mother and father and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one. That's the way it was in the beginning. The law came because of sin not because of righteousness. And so Paul, that gives us great understanding about relationships and how it should be. We need to walk that way. And you won't make dumb mistakes like I made. You'll realize we're partners in this thing person who's your greatest partner on the face of the earth is a person that you that you live with you know Mike I was thinking I, I just I, I wanted to give you this word this week but um, this is a good time to give it because of what you did for Ann because of sacrificing what you sacrificed the rest of your life is going to tend upward and God is working and going to work out everything for your good and there's, cause you know, you know, there are things in life. I have a book called The Saints. It's a, it's a Catholic book, and it goes back and it picks up all the saints, the people who, 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 who brought into sainthood. And you know that most of them that were brought into sainthood, did you know they, they, they didn't live this long, big old life of goodness. Most of them did one particular thing really, really well. And when they did it, the church saw how well they did that particular thing, and they crowned them, if you will, saints. Saints. You see, God takes notice of the good things that you do. There was a woman who anointed Jesus' feet, 
And the disciples said, oh, this ought not to be. He didn't know what kind of woman's touching him. And, and Christ said, this one thing that she's doing will be a memorial unto her unto all generations. One thing she did. Wow, one thing. You see, we go through life with them. Man, if I could just do this one great thing. You know what? God notices every simple thing that you do. And you never know in life when this one particular thing you do, you're going to become a saint. It's going to be noticed by God that that was a good thing that you did. guarantee you if I could write it out the whole story from Barbara and I's relationship it boiled down to a very few things over our 42 years of marriage it boiled down to probably three or four very significant very important things that we did for each other that brought the wholeness in the relationship you with me relational wholeness Just not that many things, church, that we're going to get trophies for. But you never know that one day that you say something or you do something for your mate that's going to revolutionize and change that marriage forever. My wife still remembers one thing I said to her. I was on Wesley Drive, and we just came by the Methodist Church. And I had this thought about her, and I wanted to tell her. And I looked, I said, Barbara, you are the sweetest person I know. That's been one of the two or three things she remembers that meant more to her than anything at that moment I had ever said to her. She cried and she looked at me and wept. She said, that's the greatest thing anybody's ever said to me. And she said, and coming from you, and you know a lot of people, say, you never know. And so what happens, we all have these thoughts we all have these thoughts you have them sometimes I mean I have a thought you know when I get home I'm gonna tell her this or I'm gonna tell him this you ever have those thoughts and then you get there and you shut up I mean has ever done that besides me raise your hand all right everybody's done that don't do that when you have you never know that you never know if he or she at that moment needs that more than anything else they just need that And I can speak on, on our behalf. It hadn't been the big things. And let me say, relationships can handle the big stuff. They really, do you know that people can handle adversity better than they can prosperity? It's not the big things that wreck a marriage. It's the little things not done and said. It's the little things that was in the beginning that's not now. It's the little, small things. So don't ever take for granted those things. You, man, you will go. Barbara and I have gone through the biggest trial a marriage can go through. We've been through it. That didn't, that, that, was, that was a piece of cake. Because a piece of cake, it's not those things that destroy. It's the little consistent things every single day of every day that you do.
took me 35 years of marriage to put the toilet lid down. 35 years. I remember one time, Barbara said, please, would you put the toilet seat down? I, I thought, that ain't a big, I, you know, at that moment, that time, it kind of irritated, I don't know, I know don't ever, you guys never get irritated about stuff like this, but it would irritate me. This really, ha I finally, after about the 500th time, she said, would you please put the toilet seat down? Because I think, what the big deal is that? And I really said the other, I, what you thought I was going to say. What, what the big deal is that? And I said, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's a lie, a bit of hell. Saw Barbara teach our old dog new tricks. She could throw a ball and say, go get the ball or, the, or this or that. Could throw three things out there when Gabby was 10 years old. And so go get the ball. You go get the ball. Go get this. Go get that. But he went and she went, he, she went and got this and that. So I said, you can teach an old dog new tricks. And you know what? I started letting the toilet seat down about five years ago. I mean, you can, you can do it, guys. It's, you, you can really do it. Yeah, watch. It's not a big deal. It is to her. That was a big deal to her. And she, every night, you know what she do every blue moon now? Thank you for putting the toilet seat down. Ooh, wow. Let's stand. I don't know if you got anything out of this, because I hope you got something. Sometimes, sometimes when you, somebody told me one time, said, you sure do chase a lot of rabbits. I said, yeah, but I catch most of them. As long, long as you catch them, that's the main, the main thing. I pray that as we receive communion today, as the eldership's coming to come and receive your elements and go back to your seat, I hope that we can just meditate for a few moments upon this and go, you know what? As I take it today and remembering what Christ did for me, I want to put this in practice for myself. I want to serve you. I want to become your servant. What would happen if everybody decided today, I'm going to be my husband's servant. I'm going to be my wife's servant. Wow, what a life. Amen. So just be coming and receive the elements to go back.
personally think the most powerful thing that was ever said about Jesus was when he said this, and the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. And my blood it cleanses you and washes you. And as you drink this in remembrance of me, go and do what I've done. Love each other. You may be seated for just a moment couple of things I want to share with you. If you have your connection card, make sure that you have filled out the back. If you are, have children that are going to the Crystal Springs trip, we need to know that. Make sure we have enough transportation or if you're working at Rushton or whatever it may be that you're doing, make sure that you put that on there. If you're a visitor, if you will mark that and an email address, we'd love to just follow up with you. Thank you for being here today. And uh, we have a, uh, the email that went out, the blast, went out this week. It goes out every Thursday. If you don't get it, it's because you haven't signed up for it. All you have to do is go to eagleswaychurch.org and click on uh, connect on a weekly basis and put your email address in there and you'll get that blast. I told you there was going to be a free gift. And we do. We have a free gift for you today. Um, and I'm going to share that with you. So listen to this video real quick. Our church is a light in the darkness, a city on a hill. Every believer is called to make a difference in the world, to love God completely, and to make disciples of every nation. But in this busy, mobile, noisy world, it can be difficult to even do the basics, to pray, to read the word, to bring the love of God to our marriages, families, neighbors, and coworkers. We know you're here because you want to be a part of God's mission on the earth. You want to experience the abundant life that Scripture talks about. You're looking to connect your faith to every part of your life, every day of the week. That's why our church is subscribing to Right Now Media and making it available for free to every member of our church. You'll have access to over 10,000 online Bible study videos on parenting, marriage, finance, discipleship, leadership, and many more. The videos can be used in Bible study groups or for personal devotion. There's also a huge library of safe biblical kids videos. We'd love to see every member of our church utilizing Right Now Media. Small group leaders leading their adult or youth groups through engaging Bible study series. Children enjoying safe programming that doesn't just entertain, but helps lay a strong spiritual foundation. Families spending quality time together going through devotional Bible studies. Couples using biblical studies on marriage, parenting, and finance. Applying God's Word to every area of their lives. There is something for everyone. We want to help you grow as a disciple of Christ. And we want to help you become a disciple maker in your home, your school, your workplace, your neighborhood, in whatever mission field God has called you to. We believe that this free resource will help equip and unleash you to live out your faith in every area of life to experience God-centered, abundant life, not just on Sundays, but every day. We are for you, and God is for you. He wants to empower you every day to live for Him. Together, we can be a light in the darkness, a city on a hill. This is basically a Christian Netflix, and you do not have to pay the $8.99 a month in order to have access to it. It will be free to you. If you have, get emails from us. This morning you are receiving an email from us, and it's going to give you the opportunity to log in and begin using this resource. I, in your bulletin was a, uh, another flyer that kind of talks a little bit about that and how that operates and works. If you do not receive emails from us, before the ushers come in just a second, you put your email address today on this form then we can get you signed up and make sure that you uh, 
uh, can get that email. So we would like everyone using it. Uh, we pay the same price each month, whether one uses it or whether everyone uses it. And you are actually going to have the opportunity to be able to share that with neighbors or family or friends that you would like to share that with. So we're excited about it. We're excited about the opportunities it can bring to your household. Tasha has already been using it, and she's, she's got Boone using it, and loving every minute of it. A lot of the videos and different things will be used in the classrooms and for the children and different aspects. So we're, we're excited about that. As our ushers are prepared to receive our morning's tithes and offerings and alms, they'll begin doing that. I don't know if the band was planning on coming back up or not. Um, we, we, can, we can get away with not doing that this morning. Any way that you view Netflix, somebody asks, is this for your computer? Whether you stream it to your TV, whether you stream it to your phone, whether you stream it, however you do that, you will be able to use this opportunity. So however the streaming device, there'll be an app that you can download, um, and that all of that will be explained in that email. If you have any questions with that, once you've received that email, make sure that you call the church office, and we will have Connie up to speed on how to make sure she can explain that to you. Let's pray and let's bless this offering. Father, Lord, we thank you that we can come to your house. Lord, that we can receive. Father, Lord, your word, that we can worship you. But we thank you, Father, Lord, for the, the impartation of your spirit, and the presence of your spirit. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there is about 180 pieces of chicken that have been cooked, and there are not quite 180 people here. So if you were not planning on eating lunch here already, you can get it to go and have it for dinner tonight. I don't want to throw chicken away. Actually, we won't throw chicken away. We'll take it to the soup kitchen tomorrow. But if you will eat it, we would love for you to be blessed by that. So if you want to walk up to the uh, youth building to get your plate, the baked bean slaw, you can eat it there or get it to go. And uh, if you don't want it, aren't prepared to make a donation today, that is not a problem. Uh, the Keith, Dr. Keith will be up there. And if you want to swipe your debit card, you can do it that way or you can do it later on during the week online. So however you would like to do that, if you would like to do that, we want you to be blessed. So God bless you. Have a great day. You are dismissed. Go and get your chicken.